There are lots of updates to discuss that concern SpaceX's first Mars rocket, Starship. We'll start with those. Another 60 Starlink satellites have been placed in orbit. The company's first dedicated rideshare mission is on deck, and we've got several honorable mentions lined up. I'm Kevin, and this is SpaceX in the News. Okay, so we got several big developments to go over that are happening right now in Boca Chica, Texas. On Wednesday morning, another test tank, dubbed serial number 7.2, was moved from the construction yard to the launch site for testing, and it was soon after strapped down to its mount, indicating further that it will most likely be pushed to failure. That very evening, Starship SN9 was poised to perform its fifth and possibly final static fire, but was aborted once again at the very last minute. No official reason has been given for these last few scrubs, but rest assured, engineers are collecting valuable data for each one so progress can keep moving forward. And so another attempt was scheduled for Thursday, and although the vehicle did reach the clouds, everyone struggled to locate the ship. But she did light up once more, the burn lasting no longer than your average belch. Did you hear that? Then just hours ago on Friday morning, SpaceX wasted no time going for startup number six. Even ET was there to enjoy the show. If all went well, we could see Starship launch as early as Monday, something we've been looking forward to seeing since SN8's flight early last month. FAA TFRs up to unlimited altitudes are in place for that through Wednesday, and we've also got a few notams up for this weekend, restricting airspace up to 7,200 feet. This is probably for testing SN 7.2's 3 millimeter thick stainless steel walls. SN10 is on deck in the high bay, receiving its finishing touches before moving down Highway 4 to join SN9, or what's left of SN9 depending on timing and the results of the upcoming flight. SN11 and 15 are growing inside the mid-bay, and although the build of Super Heavy Booster 1, or BN1, isn't yet complete, SpaceX has already started constructing BN2. But wait, there's more! We've known for some time now that Elon ultimately wants to launch and land the fully stacked Starship Super Heavy from sea platforms. In his tweet from June, he made it public that they are building floating Super Heavy class spaceports for Mars, Moon, and hypersonic travel around the Earth. But we haven't really heard much since. Until now. Because of the investigative, or nosy snoopings, of several people on the internet, it was discovered that SpaceX purchased two oil rigs for $3.5 million each. Using a subsidiary called Lone Star Mineral Development linked to Brett Johnson, CFO and President of Strategic Acquisitions Group at SpaceX. They are currently stationed in Galveston, Texas, and the thing that first tipped these curious space fans off was their names. Deimos and Phobos, the two moons of Mars. Alright, we do have a Starlink launch to debrief this week. After a couple scrubs related to weather and pre-launch inspections, Starlink 17 lifted off on Wednesday morning, carrying 60 satellites for SpaceX's Constellation program. They were released successfully about an hour later, but the really notable thing about this mission was that this was the eighth launch for this first stage booster, a record for any Falcon rocket, and it landed successfully on the autonomous drone ship stationed in the Atlantic Ocean, despite wind speeds never before encountered during a landing. SpaceX's first dedicated rideshare mission is now scheduled for tomorrow morning. They'll be taking 143 spacecraft, including 10 Starlink satellites, into space. I'll be here to watch it live if you'd like to come party with us. And then on the 27th, Starlink 18 will launch from Pad 39A. And now it's time for today's Honorable Mentions. <laughs> We've got three to quickly go over this time. First is NASA's hot fire for their SLS core booster on Saturday. Equipped with four of the Space Shuttle's RS-25 engines, the vehicle lit up for what was supposed to be an eight-minute burn for the end of their year-long green run series, but abruptly ended after one minute due to an out-of-limits perimeter in a hydraulic system for gimbling one of its engines. The test article that is behind us is also the flight hardware that will launch Orion to the moon. This is unique. That means the amount of risk that we can take is very, very low. Uh, we can't afford to have this vehicle fail. Um, and guess what? Because we have done all of the work that we have done, this article made the right decision to shut itself down. Now we've got to go figure out what made it make that decision, make some adjustments and fix it. Miss you, Jim. The first test flight for the SLS will send an Orion crew capsule into lunar orbit for the Artemis 1 mission around 2023 crew not included. Our second honorable mention is Virgin Orbit. On Sunday, they successfully dropped their Launcher 1 two-stage missile from a Boeing 747. 
lit its first stage Newton 3 engine, stage ignited the second stage Newton 4, and placed 10 CubeSats from NASA into orbit around the Earth. And finally, Rocket Lab launched their first Electron rocket for 2021 in the very early hours of January 20th, placing a single communication microsat into orbit for OHB Group. Well, that's all I have for you guys today, but I'd like to thank all my supporters on Patreon and here on the YouTube membership page for their contributions, as well as those on the ground who contribute to the channel by sharing what they capture with the space community. You can find them and support them using the links in the description below. Have a normal weekend, and until next time, Godspeed.